Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, your host for the uh, weekly program of Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. First, I want to thank the um, wonderful uh, support of uh, the staff of Think Tech Hawaii for giving us the opportunity to come into your homes on a weekly basis. We are live on Tuesdays at 12 noon. Uh, today, our topic is The Beat Goes On, and uh, I have a very um, interesting and colorful guest. Uh, he is no stranger to uh, our community, uh, also have done a wonderful job in uh, empowering others. Uh, may I introduce to you the former uh, Attorney General uh, and also Attorney for No Fire Technologies Incorporated, uh, Attorney Ron Amamiya. Thank you, Amy. Amy, I am very pleased to be on the program, and I hope to have a uh, very lively conversation with you. Well, thank you. We always do, Attorney. I learn a lot from uh, you, and I thought you would be a great guest for the empowerment. And uh, let's begin. Uh, talking story from small key time. I can relate to the many uh, stories that uh, we always uh, share, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, me growing up on the island of Lanai. So it's pretty much like where you grew up in Wahiawa. So uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Yes. Well, Lanai is like where I grew up because it, they were both owned by Dole, Dole Pineapple, mm -hmm. if yes. you recall. I was born in a place called Kimu Camp, 150 people. Mm. Um, I spent my first 10 years in that camp. We had <clears throat> uh, outdoor toilets. Um, I can relate no, to that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. uh, <clears throat> what else did we, we did not have? You know, we didn't have um, uh, uh, we did have electricity, but uh, <clears throat> limited supply, very probably. limited. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to take a bath outside. Okay, the banyo. Yes, banyo. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we had that kind of uh, <clears throat> existence, and the the, ro the roads were all dirt for about one mile until you got to uh, Kaukonahua Road mm -hmm. that leads down to Waialua. Um, so that's the kind of existence we had right in the middle of the pineapple fields. And uh, <clears throat> it was a wonderful upbringing. You, know, you could do a lot of bad things without being um, caught. In those <laughs> <things. laughs> they didn't have the modern technologies of uh, the cell phone where you can instantly no. uh, capture uh, someone's moment. And the, and the police were never around, right? They were always in Wahewa town, so, mm. yeah, well, we Perhaps were... Perhaps they were in the Bulangan, <laughs> <laughs> watching the cockfight, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we, we did have cockfights, mm -hmm. na naturally, but um, it was a, a real peaceful existence, you know, where yes. we didn't have a lot of temptations that kids today have. You know. Exactly, and that's uh, that's where I find it very, very interesting, and how laid back life used to be, and yet mm -hmm. we were content. Oh, very, very content. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons is all of us were equal. You know, no family had an edge over another. We're all uh, all families of of Dole, working for Dole, mm -hmm. so we couldn't um, very well. Um, say, oh, that family has more than us, or, or something like that, to make up an excuse if we didn't do something right. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, that's probably <clears throat> what contributed to a more uh, peaceful and orderly existence, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yes. But going back to uh, what you mentioned about camps, uh, is it because it was run like a military? Is that what we call district today? Or? No, not really. Um, we, the kids were given a lot of freedom, mm -hmm. you know, to, well, d during the summers, like my mother would make a pinto mm -hmm. for lunch and say, don't come back until supper time. So <laughs> we had all that time to do mischief if you 
you can imagine. So we used to go down to the gulfs, go fishing, or mm -hmm. pick, picking uh, lilikoi, guava, yes. um, playing up at the park, you know. Um, so There was, was no summer school, right, to occupy your time? Absolutely no summer school. Mm. Um, we were <clears throat> we're on our own, shall we say, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. And we always had the older boys to uh, look up to. Right. Who led us in mischief, but th that's all right. You know, we didn't get into mischief or hurting people, just uh -huh. doing silly things. Well, if you did that today, leave your children unattended, they will call uh, the cops and report <laughs> you for abandonment. Yes. You know, as I said, we're six, seven years old. Uh -huh. Out the door with your lunch and don't come back to dinner time. And you're free to roam without having to worry about being kidnapped or um, mm -hmm. taken for ransom. <laughs> no, one, no one would come into the camp, you know. Um, so what, was it like a fence in uh, territory? Oh, or? No, 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 not at all. Wide uh -huh. open, wide open. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but very um, peaceful upbringing. Mm -hmm. And we were... <clears throat> permitted to make make mistakes and not get hurt by those mistakes. Really? Yes. Wow, I would think that if you made a mistake, you would pay dearly uh, because our parents are more strict and they expected so much more out of us. No, not, not really. Um, <clears throat> there's one incident I, I should cite. A, a neighbor of mine uh -huh. <clears throat> came to me and said, his mother told him he had to sleep with the chickens that night. I said, what did you do? <laughs> We're about eight years old. Uh -huh. He said, well, I threw this little kitten down into the commode, you know, the outdoor toilet? Yes. And the mother said, if you don't get the chicken, I'm sorry, the kitten out before evening, mm -hmm. you're going to sleep with the chickens. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> can you imagine we are eight years old, one guy goes home to get um, AB, you know, uh, stink fish. Uh, uh -huh. Another one gets a rope, a box, flashlight. Right. To get the cat out. Okay. Because we, we had to help our friend who uh -huh. otherwise would have had to have slept with the chickens. With the chickens, too. So we, we did exactly what we thought we should do. Uh huh. And brought the chicken, I mean, uh, again, the, the kitten. kitten out and wash the kitten <laughs> with warm water, uh -huh. soap. To get and, all the stinky out. Yes, and then presented the kitten to the mother. So the mother said, okay, you won't have to sleep with the chicken. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that was a great example of, uh, you know, uh, being able to uh, uh, do what you need to do without uh, being punished, but paying the consequence. Yes. we. Uh -huh. <laughs> We were quite ingenious, you know, when, when you were given yes. a lot of leeway, you come up with ideas on how to help your friends. It, it's better to uh, do it synergistically when you think yes. all together <clears throat> and uh, get a common idea, and you succeeded. Yes, yeah. yes. Can you imagine if <clears throat> we were uh, still able to do that in today's world with all the modern um, technologies that we have, uh, it seems like uh, we don't use uh, uh, half of our brain because we let our computer gadget uh, do the thinking for us. I mean. I, I believe so. Um, growing up in a camp like that where you mm -hmm. can make mistakes and um, come up with solutions. Right. Helps you in later life. Like it sure helped me when I went into the Army as a young officer mm -hmm. um, to, you know, I had to make some quick decisions for my uh, for my men. Survival. So, no, well, I, I didn't have to serve in the war, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I had to take care of, well, 30, 40 people, you know, right. um, in a platoon. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> so those experiences that I had. Help you through. Yes. Yeah. It sharpens your thinking and gives you ideas on how to approach the problems Mm -hmm. that you have in later life. Yeah. Wow, so those are like uh, <clears throat> real life uh, trials that you can apply Absolutely. to uh, everyday situations, especially uh, in the military. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, 
So it, <clears throat> it was helpful in that sense. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So anyway, I lived at Kemo Camp for my first 10 years. Then I moved to Whitmore Village. Oh, okay. The, the, you know, so is uh, that like a progression well, from the camp to the village? <laughs> there were um, like 1,800 people living in Whitmore. Oh, so Whitmore was way a, more. Whitmore was a conglomeration of all of the dough camps throughout all the pineapple fields. Okay, so that was like the center hub, it, right? It's the only, only place where the, the um, <clears throat> dole employees live uh -huh. after the conglomerate. Conglomeration. So was that considered like the city within the camp? I mean, it's like the big village, right? It is. Um, it was big, but yet small. Uh huh. No. Yes. So is that where you uh, were able to associate with the different nationalities? I mean, uh, Filipinos. Well, we started in Kimo Camp. Mm -hmm. There were more Filipinos than, than any other than race. Japanese, yes. Right. And the same with with more village. Uh huh. I would say maybe. 60% were Filipinos, <clears throat> but we were all the same. Yeah? All of our families worked for the pineapple camp. Right, right. For Dole. See, so again. So your parents, uh, what did they do? Did they work as Lunas or uh, my, in management? My, my dad worked <clears throat> worked as a Luna. As a Luna. Yeah. Uh -huh. But my mom, no, she would pick pineapples. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, it's the typical uh, on Lanai where I grew up. Uh, uh, the men, especially the educated ones, would mm. take on the managerial uh, <coughs> role, like Lunas or mm -hmm. Phil, Phil Boss, mm -hmm. yeah? And then the, the women would uh, uh, do the uh, other types of job, whether it was uh, weeding or picking pineapples or sidelining, we right. call it, right? Right. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, the planting, which is a back-breaking job, oh. left, was left for the men, right? right? And they used to tell me that the Filipino men uh -huh. were the best planters. They had strong backs. Well, <laughs> they used to plant like ten thousand plants a day. A day. I, I can uh, I, I can give you a reason for that, attorney, and that's <laughs> because uh, we start off as farmers, and mm -hmm. when we uh, plant the rice rice field. Yes. You you got to do it with a beat, man. Oh, <laughs> You're constantly on your and your feet, so mm. your uh, back will mm. do the bending, mm. uh, so that you can reach the the ground to plant the the grains. Ten thousand plants a day. I mean, of yeah. course, you got paid by incentive, mm -hmm. so they got paid a lot, but yeah. they earned it. But you know? that's way better than uh, working in the pineapple f uh, in 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 the rice field. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In that really harsh um, sun and uh, back home, mm -hmm. we don't get suited up or protected. Mm -hmm. You know how you work in the pineapple fields? You put on the arm guard. Uh, you, you get the three layers of clothing. Yes. Yeah, uh huh. Goggles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All those things are not available to us. So you would. Just work directly under the mm -hmm. uh, that really hot sun. One year between my first and second year of law school, mm -hmm. I came back to be a Luna in the, uh, the uh, for, for the company, uh -huh. and I had a gang of girls and women. Oh, <laughs> tell us of, about that, Zerny. <laughs> How was that one? Ten, ten of ten of them. Uh -huh. and, you know, it's hard work because you got to follow the machine. Right. The boom. Yes. And, put, put the and pick the pineapple and flip them into yeah. that conveyor belt. Yeah. Yeah. And at times, <clears throat> you know, a woman would have to use the bathroom. Right, right. <laughs> so I would have to run in, take her line. And fill she, in. Well, she did the, ba <laughs> the bathroom. Yes. And then when she came back, I would jump out uh -huh. and be the Luna again. Oh, wow. But, so you filled in. <clears throat> yeah. That's, I, that's the bigger role of a Luna. <laughs> Wow, what an interesting conversation we're having with uh, former Attorney uh, General Loran Amemiya. And we're talking about uh, Smoke Kid Time with our uh, title for our show today, and the beat goes on. We're going to continue our conversation after the shirt break on Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us 
every other Monday, aloha. Welcome back to Pinoy Power Hawaii. Again, I'm your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson, where we come to you every Tuesday at 12 noon. We're gonna talk, we're gonna continue our talk, uh, <laughs> our segment, uh, and the beat goes on with uh, former Attorney General Ron Amamiya. He's also the attorney for No Fire Technologies, Inc. So before we went on a break, we're talking about small kid time, growing up mm -hmm. in a camp and uh, a village. And I can really relate to your stories, um, attorney, because that's pretty much how I grew up on the island of Lanai. Mm -hmm. So when you were describing your gang of women and how the Luna, which was you, and that was very, very interesting time because you were young, just graduated from law school. No, not yet. Not oh, yet? Uh, be first, between my first and second year. Oh, okay. So you were in a summer break then. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay but uh, certainly uh, showed uh, leadership skills, <laughs> and you were instantaneously given that uh, title, uh, mm -hmm. Luna, uh, the foreman, and I grew up with a lot of Lunas. Uh, some Lunas were not as nice, but <laughs> you sound like you were ready uh, to fill in at any time uh, for the women. Oh, yes, we had to, mm -hmm. because otherwise one line would not have any pineapples picked, right? Yeah, you would leave all the pineapples <laughs> so behind. You'd have to, if she was, let's say, on the 10th line, I would uh -huh. have to jump over 10, 10 different rows yes. to get there yeah. and tell it to hurry with your, up. You know? With your cover <laughs> pants. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was a very interesting time, uh -huh. the summer that I spent um, <clears throat> working with, well, I had the women, I had the young boys, mm -hmm. I had... So uh, did, you, did you have like a manso, manso uh, time? Manso is when the uh, truck goes uh, faster because you want to make bonus, right? Yes, yeah. oh we yes. We call that manso. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yes, all of, all of us were <clears throat> on uh, incentive, shall we say. Uh -huh. yeah. But, <laughs> you know, you get 10 women and they're not going to make <laughs> too much money, but, uh, well. they, but they still work uh -huh. hard. They work real hard. Eight hours in the sun, yes. hot sun. The fun. dirt and every, oh. all of the uh, elements outside. I know, I know, it's like, I was so dark. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, that's the difference between now and then. Yes. Back then, all kids, as, well, as on the pineapple pl mm -hmm. plantation, had to work, work during the summer. If you didn't work, mm -hmm. you know, like a bo uh, as a boy, you were called a sissy. See? Oh. So, I mean, you had, no matter what, you had to go and work, right? So, yeah. yeah. So, so those were uh, valuable lessons, uh, attorney, that I learned. I uh, also learned the value of hard work and appreciated uh, uh, getting money and learning how to uh, manage it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And one, two, two summers I worked, at the pineapple cannery mm -hmm. in the oh. Janaka, in the Janaka okay. um, department, you have you have to put in 125 pineapples into the machine a minute. 125 a minute. Yep. Wow. I mean, just because you were taking care of a lot of the uh, um, trimmers and the packers, right? Uh -huh. So one guy like me could maybe take care of 50 women. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and at least two, three weeks, we would work 72 hours a week, mm -hmm. six days a week, 12, <clears throat> 12 hours a day. So, and that was hard work. Wow. Yeah. Was yeah. well, that one of the reasons why you uh, really concentrated on your education <laughs> and uh, eventually uh, got your uh, lawyer's degree? Well, I think it... It is an incentive to mm -hmm. to <clears throat> uh, do as well as you can in school, so that you can 
pretty much um, go into any field that you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did work very hard in, you know, in school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, your desire, uh, um, attorney, to get to further your education came from what? Was it something that your parents, especially your mother, instilled in you? Hey, uh, you better get go to school so you don't have to work like us. You know. Yes, that, yeah. that was part of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you see, in my case, mm -hmm. very interestingly, I went to Punahou for four years. Oh, Punahou. Because I played baseball. Uh huh. And then I guess they needed baseball players, so. I went there for four years. So, uh, just like you were brought in as a uh, athlete. Well, they don't like to think of it that way, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I had the grades too. So, uh -huh. uh, student athlete, they call us. Wow. You know? So, I was very lucky. Yeah. For four that, years, I got an excellent high school education. That is awesome. So, um, you were sent there for. Or you didn't have to pay the high uh, tuition that... No, no, it was... Uh, I got a scholarship. You that. got a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, Nowadays, it's over 20 grand. 20 oh, grand, right? Over. My, over. My grandson just graduated to four years. And okay. Yeah, his parents were complaining about the amount of money they had to spend. Yeah, just for Punahou. Uh, well, he went for 13 years. Yeah. Oh, thir oh, professional student. Well, kindergarten to 12 <laughs> <laughs> right, professional at Puno. Um, <clears throat> but so you can imagine how much they paid yeah. in tuition. Yeah. yeah. When people go to Punahou, you Lani, they're professional students <laughs> because you don't want to waste, waste any of that pr precious time and money. You know, if you're not getting a scholarship, it's costing you a big dime. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So um, your your sons are also successful attorneys. Uh, yes. Was that something that, uh, because they saw you doing what you're doing, and that kind of uh, planted the dream or instilled uh, the value of education to uh, to your sons? You know, I really don't know because I did not push them. You did not push no, them. Not wow. At all. They had to make uh -huh. <clears throat> the decisions on their own because if I pushed them and they didn't like it, you know, they would hold a you don't grudge want to be against me. For it. Right. Right. Uh -huh. So, yeah, <clears throat> they um, they went on their own. And um, they're doing, luckily, they're doing very well. Really well. Yes. Yeah, I know you're really quiet about your kids' um, achievement. And unlike Filipinos, you know, we'd like to reiterate, repeat, you know, mm -hmm. oh, my son is a graduate from Harvard or UCLA, and he's the attorney for this and that. And you mm -hmm. know what? <laughs> we go on and on. You, you just said, oh, they're doing really well. So yes. you must be very, very proud of Absolutely, that. absolutely. Yeah. And um, after Puno, I went to the University of Hawaii for four years. Again, I played baseball, so I got part of my <coughs> tuition So paid. it pays to be smart. Uh, and a little Intelligent. Athletic. <laughs> and athletic, too. Athletic, too. Yeah, those, that's a powerful combination. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. Um, so four years there, I got my... Commissioned to be an officer in mm -hmm. the United States Army. I, um, <clears throat> I did my training in Fort Gordon, Georgia, in Augusta. Uh -huh. I was first stationed in White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, where we were testing all of our missiles. Uh huh. Yeah. Thereafter, I went to Korea. Um, oh, it was peacetime Korea, but still, at times there were, you know, some mm -hmm. incidents that. Um, triggered some uh, real <clears throat> concerns. After that, I served with the 25th Infantry at Schofield. I did a lot of training in the hills of Kahuku. Uh -huh. And the unit I was with was then training to go to Vietnam, because oh. Vietnam was starting to heat up. That's in uh, mm -hmm. 1964. So you were just doing the training. You, you helped to prepare them for the actual war in Vietnam. Oh, yes. We did a lot of maneuvering. Uh -huh. um, that's, but yeah. did you go to Vietnam no, and no, uh, uh, led your troop? No. I no? went to law school. See. Law school saved me from Vietnam. Okay. So you uh, diverted and uh, learned a way to <laughs> get out of the draft, right? Well, no. My, my two-year co two commitment was up. Oh. See, as uh -huh. an officer, so 
<clears throat> and I had applied to a law school many months ago, so I, we, I didn't know that Vietnam would be happening. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. But it saved you yeah. from going into war because of your commitment to continue your education. Yes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. didn't they have the draft that no matter what? No, no, but I, I went in as an officer, see? Oh, okay. See, so I didn't have to worry about the You draft. were excluded. <laughs> Boy, really pays to be smart, um, attorney. Well, it, it helped in the in You get special of, favors. Yeah, we... we um, uh -huh. uh, well, I don't know about special favors. <laughs> uh, you don't have to but sleep. Office, you don't have to not. sleep with a producer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no! If you go to war, you sleep with you sleep with your men. Oh, you oh, sleep yeah. with your men. Oh, no, yeah. that was like a side note. You know, in Hollywood, oh. if you want to move ahead, but let's <laughs> take Hollywood out of our conversation because that's another show. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, my my um, military career, I. Met so many different kinds of people. Yeah. Right. So it's not just uh, limited to uh, the people from Hawaii. <clears throat> oh no, no. These no, no one from Hawaii except me and uh -huh. all of the units I went to. Right. Georgia, White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Korea, and well, Schofield Barracks. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, excuse me. <clears throat> We're talking it, about uh, okay. <clears throat> it um, it gave me a wonderful. People education. Mm -hmm. You you know you met different people at all these different right. um, stations, and well, you see, in my case, I grew up pineapple plantation. Yes. <clears throat> one group of people, University of Hawaii, another group. Mm -hmm. In the army, another group. Law school, another group. I had a perfect people education. Wow. Not too many people are as fortunate as mm -hmm. me. So you you would be perfect for a public re relationship. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, attorney, our our time is almost up. So mm -hmm. um, if you could uh, leave a word or an advice to the people that are listening, especially the young ones, what would you uh, encourage them to do? I would say, do what is right. Do not do what is expedient, because uh, in the long run. Whenever you do what is right, um, you will be very satisfied with what happens at the end. Wow, do what is right. Yes. Uh -huh. That's a solid, uh, sound advice. And that's probably all you needed to tell your, uh, your boys, your children, yes. to just do the right thing. That's right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> wonderful. Well, um, I know you've had a very successful uh, uh, job from uh, the military from the pineapple field to the military and uh, serving others uh, with your uh, law degree and uh, you continue to do that uh, attorney for the people we uh, want to commend you for the wonderful leadership that uh, you've shown and shared especially in our Filipino community uh, you're a common household name especially for the politicians so. Well, it's been a <clears throat> wonderful experience, and I've enjoyed all mm -hmm. of it. You know. Wonderful. Uh, well, till till today, my friends from Whitmore call me whenever their grandsons get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there you go to it's help ha save It's them. happened <laughs> three or four different occasions. Yes. You know, and for me, it's easy to do. You know, uh -huh. but they're all scared, right? Oh. Going to court. Well, looks like the beat goes on, attorney Rana Mamiya, and your job will continue um, empowering others. Uh, we've run out of time, and uh, we encourage you to continue tuning into our weekly conversation here on Pinar Power Hawaii. Uh, keep tuning in to the many different uh, programs that we have here on Think Tech Hawaii, and again, we express aloha, mabuhay, maraming salamat po.